What's up traders? Matt from the Trade Brigade here doing a technical analysis on our broad market. We'll cover SPY the Qs and IWM today. On the left hand side, as always, we do have the daily time frame and on the right hand side, the 30 minute intraday time frame. Up first on the chopping block is our S&P 500 and this chart is brought to you by none other than the infamous balance area. You can see all of these have been forming in the past month and a half or so. It's quite a bit, to be quite honest with you, and it's fairly indicative of a market that's very difficult to trade, especially when you have many of them in short proximity of time, because it's a day up, it's two days down, it's a day up, it looks like a breakout, it's a day down, it's a day up, it's so on and so forth. You get the gist, right? We all know the market's been very, very hard to read, very choppy over the past month and a half or so, and we're still in a nice area of balance right here. So what does that mean for us going forward? Well, balance rules are in place. So let's cover them in today's video. Here is the balance area. The top of that range is 429. The bottom end of that range is 417.50, 417 even, maybe even a little bit lower if you want to count the true lows in there, but I'm going based on the point of control from the invasion day here, February 24th. Uh, again, 417.50, all right? So use those numbers as your top and bottom. So there's really a finite number of options that can happen here. We can either break out, that's called the look above and go, or just a break and go, right? That's a breakout pretty straightforward. Target's going to be here, 437. It's the next structural element from the daily time frame. It's also slightly above the resistance trend line. So we'll see if we can break the predominant daily downtrend that's been in effect ever since the all-time highs, right? You can see how these are producing lower highs. If this cracks and we get to 437, hey, maybe it's the change in trend here on the daily time frame, especially noting that we have a low. This could potentially be the set of higher lows. It's not ideal because it's so close here, but if it happens, hey, we got to work with what we're given. So that's the look above and go, break and go, break out scenario here in the S&P 500. We can't also write off the fact that we could see a look above and fail. So a daily close back down underneath 429 after a failed breakout. So say we resist early at the trend line, come back down and close inside, the target's instantly the bottom end of the range. So 417.50. Okay, that's how that one pans out. Now, where are some examples of this happening in the past? Well, if we look at this balance area, there's your break and go, right? That's roughly a doubling of the range. There you go. So that's the measured move, by the way, right? You double the range that you were stuck in. Where do we see a look above and fail? Right here, the most recent one. There's your look above. We close back down inside the range, and the very next day, we make it to the bottom. You could also think of this. It's like two micro ranges, right? Something like this. So there's your breakout. It's a failed move. We accept back down inside of the balance from in here. That's your look above and fail. Target the bottom end of the range, right? So this stuff works. And that's how we're going to, you know, apply the same exact rules to the balance that's forming here right now. Uh, what is uh, the downside or what are, excuse me, the downside scenarios? Clearly the same but opposite, but breaking down underneath 417.50. If it cracks, you're targeting the low from here because that's the equal low uh, or potentially equal low, the invasion day low from February 24th. That's 410.65. Now, is that a double of the range? Not quite, not quite. But because this is such a significant low, I would look at this first before just assuming the range has to double and take us to roughly 407, somewhere in that area, right? So that's the downside on a breakdown, look below and go. We could also have the look below and fail, right? So something that does this closes back above 417.50, target instantly becomes the top of the range at 429, right? So it works both directions. Do we have any examples of that? Not really, because we have been firmly in a downtrending market, which again, keep in mind the daily trend as well. So maybe start to favor a look above and fail, right? That could be something that's attractive to you or just resistance at the top of the range. If we move to the bottom, maybe we get that breakdown, break and go, right? So those are things that I'm thinking about here in the S&P 500 based on our daily balance. Don't also forget that we can remain sideways inside of the balance. There's nothing saying that this has to break tomorrow. This has to break the next day. It has to break on Friday. It has to break uh, next Monday, right? We could remain in balance indefinitely. No one knows for sure. I don't think it's likely, but it could potentially happen, right? Another reason why I don't think that remaining in balance is uh, going to be a likely scenario is because obviously tomorrow is Wednesday and at 2 p.m. on tomorrow's Wednesday session, we will have Jerome Powell on the microphone for not only the FOMC meeting minutes, but more importantly, the Fed funds rate. Everyone's expecting, as we've discussed in the past, that 0.25 interest rate hike. If it's zero, we think that the market will like that. Will it be good for the long-term health of the economy? No, I don't think so. Uh, but ultimately, we're talking about 
the market, not the economy, right? Two different things. If we get 0.5, a double hike right out of the gates, the market probably will not respond favorably to that. And maybe we get that look below and go scenario. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking about. Keep these scenarios in mind. I don't know which one is going to unfold. The market's kind of already pricing in, or people believe the market is pricing in the 0.25. So we'll see what happens from there. Okay. Those are the scenarios. Those are the levels that I will be thinking about in the SPY. From the 30 minute perspective, can we learn anything else about the chart? Yes. Yes, we can. So you can clearly see right here, we have a pivot point. It's roughly 422. If we remain above that and we start to put in higher lows, then maybe we start to build out a bull flag and it starts to sort of preface the move is higher. If we break back down and form a lower high underneath, give ourselves an equal low reattempt. I just drew an H pattern off of the lower high. All of these interactions at the uh, point of control from here, maybe that sets to, uh, uh, the breakdown point, right? So watch the intraday. Just because we're in balance and yeah, it's ping pong back and forth doesn't mean that we can't learn anything interesting about where the levels are forming, where our structure is forming on the 30 minute time frame. So use 422. It's also, it's not quite the midpoint of the range, but it's fairly close. Use that as a pivot point, right? Above, look for more bullish activity. Below, look for more bearish activity. It's as simple as that here in the S&P 500. The more patient trader, the more conservative trader waiting for a larger move to develop will wait for the break of 429 to the upside or the breakdown of 417 to the downside to continue the daily downtrend, right? So that's the SPY. Let's continue along to the QQQ, see if any of this will sort of uh, mirror over to this chart. And yes and no, yes and no. So you can see, we do have these prior areas of balance, right? Those are on the chart, but look at this area of balance, right? Very, very sloppy compared to what we just saw in the S&P 500. I mean, it's very easy to see when you just get these areas of, of sideways action, quite literally, where the bars are stacked, same size bodies, one's up, one's down, one's up, one's down, so on and so forth. But you can see here, it's much more choppy, okay? So we are continuously producing or potentially producing those lower highs. We're resisting, or we topped out today at least, at the bottom end of a two-day balance. So this can happen on smaller time frames too, right? It doesn't have to be you know, a week's worth of candles. It can just be one or two. Those two green days were a small two-day balance, right? So much more bearish here in the QQQ, just based on the structure, the balance isn't as clean. Uh, to me, the bullish trade really develops if we can take out the top here at 335 quarter. Why is that? Well, it's a break also of the resistance trend line. It would then be a higher high from the daily perspective, right? So here's your high. If we set a higher high, maybe there's an opportunity for a higher low pullback and the trend starts to reverse. I don't know for sure, but 335 uh, quarter is the level where that would start to become uh, a, a reasonable thing to watch out for, right? So that's the upside. Again, does that look likely? Not really given that we're so far away from it, even if we see a massive rally tomorrow, maybe it just takes us to that area. Maybe it doesn't even break it, right? And then also don't forget the daily trend is down. We have all of these equal lows, whereas the S&P 500 did not make all of these equal lows. Uh, the S&P did something here, and then we have this, and then a higher low here. Whereas in the QQQ, you can clearly see low, slightly higher low, and now a lower low beneath both of those from the Monday session, right? So the QQQ exhibiting extreme relative weakness, but nonetheless, we have to treat it objectively. If this is gonna be your range, we always say that there's not a whole lot of edge at the midpoint of the range. I would be patient for the move here, or mean reversion, right? That's always a possibility as well. We could also get that look above and fail, right? If that happens here, target should be back down at these lows, or we could just get something that does this. If we move back down towards the bottom, it's a breakdown, not only of this range right here, but the major low from right here as well. So we should target something significant to the downside. The first one should easily be 309 and then anything underneath that. We don't really have anything other than a gap way down there around 280. I'm not saying that that's gonna be in play. Um, however, we should search for a downside target that's a little bit more reasonable, okay? So let's take into account some of these wicks here. That would be around 300 even, all right? Over the course of time, I'm not saying it gets there tomorrow, but that's essentially the uh, more major downside target if we get the lower high scenario, another equal low, and this really just turns into a big flush point descending triangle, that would be uh, my target to the downside, about 15 points below us at 300, all right? So that's the QQQ on the daily 30 minute time frame. What else can we learn? Uh, let's see here. Let's remove that. Uh, you can get the same sort of idea that we saw in the SPY, right? Here's your sort of advanced heads up level at 324. Anything that consolidates above is starting to put in higher lows on the 30 minute. A break of this should take us to that top there at the 335. That's that resistance here on the daily. So that would be the upside play, right? As long as it kind of holds around that 324. If that cracks, again, there you go. Probably moving back down closer to these lows at the 318.20, big flush point on our daily. So use that 324 as your pivot above 
slightly more neutral to maybe bullish in the short term for a breakout of some sort of flag here, move to that top. If we start cracking it, do something like this. What did I just draw, right? Technically, that would be head and shoulders. There's your neckline. Look for lower, right? Thin structure on the way up. Makes sense that we should move all the way back down to 318.20. That's the QQQ. Let's move along and talk about IWM. Last one up in our lineups. Uh, Russell 2000 and the small cap. So what's going on in this name? You can see large area of balance, okay? Micro balance is inside. Don't get me wrong. There's one. There's a two-day balance. Uh, any in the past? Not really. Pretty sloppy in here. I suppose that could start to become a little bit of a balance, right? Uh, I, I guess you would really draw it out as this. Let's do it that way. There you go. So there's definitely balance still here in the IWM, but nonetheless, I would look at this as the overall balance. Midpoint of the range is right about here. Again, as we always say on the channel, your edge does not exist here. Your edge literally exists at the edge for a breakout or mean reversion, and the same is true but opposite at the bottom for mean reversion or a breakdown, all right? So IWM, it does not really strike me as being in a tradable location as of right now. I suppose you could lean on this level right here, 197, as your back test area. So anything that does this and puts in a double top here on the 30 minute time frame, maybe look for reversals off of that in the short term. You're just kind of playing off of this momentum right here. It would obviously help if the um, announcement and news that comes out of tomorrow's 2 p.m. session is bearish. It would make sense that you would look for retest shorts there and then follow through to the downside, right? So that's a short side trade. And again, your pivot is 197 even. Uh, the more conservative trader might wait for something Oops, that looks like this. And then you flush the lows here. That's your entry point around 193.50. Maybe it's even underneath that low, 192 for the rotation into 187. That's the downside that I could see being uh, reasonable here. To the upside, I'm not really seeing any longs until we can do this, right? Higher low back inside of this little three-day balance from right here. If that happens, it's not quite a look below and fail, but it would mean the target should be here at the next uh, structural element from the 30-minute time frame, which is 201. It's the top of the daily balance as well, okay? But it would need to prove itself with that first higher low inside of the prior balance area right here before I would feel confident about taking the trade into 201, right? It's got to give us uh, some sort of um, proof, right, that the buyers are stepping up here. Remember, they're sort of playing around in the midpoint of the range, so you want that extra confirmation information, right? That's what I've got for us in our broad market today. A lot is really going to ride on what happens tomorrow at 2 p.m., right? Jerome Powell, he could say the right uh, combination of words and the SPY could be at, uh, let's say, 450, or he could say the right combination of words and the SPY could be at 350. We don't know for sure, but we'll have to find out, right? So that's the framework. Those are the levels. If you enjoyed today's video or learned anything new, let me know in the comment section or by giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget our main channel is linked in the description. And all of that being said, I wish you a green trading week.